Hey guys, it's Kate and I am here with another intuitive art today with mixed media and I hope you'll join me on this video. I set it to two times speed so that we could get through it. I wanted to be able to show the whole process, but it was just too much footage and too long to post the whole thing real time. So I made any cuts that I could with, um, any dead space or anything like that. And then the rest of it, I sped to two times. So I got started with a piece of charcoal and I'm going over it with some white gesso and I'm working on a um, 11 by 14 inch piece of mixed media paper that's taped down around the edges and that is about 28 by 35 centimeters. And the weight of it is 110 pounds and I've used it um, on two projects now including this one and it's held up really well. There's some rippling a little bit when it gets really wet, um, but it flattens out fine afterward and it holds up really well to all the moisture. So I'm pretty happy with it. It's Master's Touch. I got it at um, Hobby Lobby. <clears throat> so I'm working with my color palette and I'm keeping it um, fairly limited, but I'm definitely going to have a good variety of color just by doing a lot of mixes on my plate. So I'm using colors that kind of go well together on the color wheel, and they can all be kind of blended to make different hues. And at this point, I'm not really caring about where I'm putting things. I did wait for the gesso layer to dry and I loved how it mixed with the charcoal when I put it on the paper. So as you can see, I'm just going through with my different mixes and putting them next to each other, um, at least on three or so parts of the paper. So I can get whatever color I'm mixing in several areas instead of just one. And I'm going to end up covering up most of that charcoal and background, but there, <laughs> Scampi says hi, <laughs> there will be some uh, peaks of charcoal poking through the final layers. It's that time of day. She comes in for her pets and <laughs> she, she insists on attention. So I hope you don't mind a little kitty cat in the background making some noise. She's very vocal. <laughs> so I'm just putting in just random marks in different places. At this point, I want to cover up the page. I'm working with the same bristle brush I actually used in the last one, and I used it a lot for acrylics. It's got a nice firm tip. It's actually kind of an inexpensive brush, but I love the firmness of it and the roughness of it. It gives me some nice texture on the page with the brush marks uh, when you get close up. So I really enjoy using it, but whatever you prefer. But I hope that um, if you get a chance to try just some, some mark making and playing around with the supplies you have, this has been just so fun to do. I really have um, liked a lot of the, the things I've been able to experiment with and just break out the supplies and have fun and not really care where it goes. Because really, at the end of the day, if you don't like something you put down, you can cover it over. And part of the idea here is to have several layers. So I know that no matter what I'm putting down on this first layer, it's probably going to get covered up later. And so I feel a lot more comfortable making marks than if I was trying to do something sort of finished right away. There's a lot more pressure.
So I've gone in and made some circles on ovals with the darker blue and then I'm going to paint over some more again. And I'm just sort of scrubbing my brush in some areas, making some smaller marks and larger marks and kind of blending that color together. Right now it's all very pastel. I'm using a lot of the white gesso to kind of mix into the colors and put down this base layer. And I'm just having fun with it. And like with the first one, I am just sort of putting colors in random areas and I accidentally went over the <laughs> blue circle and kind of smudged it and then I really liked how it looked. So I went ahead and smudged some more and just feathered out the paint onto the page in some random directions. And I kind of like that wispy look. So then I really wanted to to play that up. Now I'm kind of going back in with the darker purple to add some more lines through it. A little bit mirroring what I was doing with the blue circles, kind of pushing the paint around. And I'm doing it with purple this time and kind of weaving my way through the painting and making some random organic lines. I'm still using up those styrofoam plates that we had extra. They make a very handy palette and very inexpensive. <laughs> I have a glass palette that I use, but for videos like this, it's a lot easier to have just something I can hold easily in my hand and kind of bring it into the frame so you can see what I'm doing if you're interested in seeing how I mix my colors and what colors I'm using. I hope that you enjoy these videos because I really have liked making them. I've had kind of two running themes on my channel and that's kind of watercolors and acrylics and then sort of an assortment of different mark making supplies like pencils or pens or things like that. And I've tried some stamping and stuff. I've just been expanding a little bit on the different supplies that I use, but I really love working with both watercolor and acrylic and experimenting with both and just seeing how they both act so differently on paper or whatever background you're working on. A lot of people might talk about intuitive art and about what it means. And I think, you know, there's a lot of different sort of personal meanings to intuitive art. But, you know, I think the common theme is that you put marks and 
paint colors and things like that where it just feels right. And I think intuitive art to me is also a great way to, well, one, learn your preferences and learn your supplies. But, you know, you have the different things that they talk about with design, like how to how to do composition so that it looks attractive to the eye and, you know, common compositions like, you know, the rule of thirds where you divide your paper or canvas into thirds and kind of put your focus areas where those lines intersect, kind of like a tic-tac-toe board almost. And then, you know, there's several other composition, you know, you have your diagonals, your golden spiral, your triangles, all of these different things. And it's nice to learn about and get background on those on paper and just have kind of an idea of what's going on. But when you're working intuitively and getting practice, I think it's also nice to be able to naturally come across those things just in your work and you can evaluate what you're doing as you go. You know, I think anybody who's ever painted, drawn, sketched, doodled, any of that, you know, it's, you get an idea of something that you want to put down and then you do it and you think to yourself, Ooh, I don't really like that. And that can definitely happen in, in the intuitive art process where you're kind of purposely putting things wherever you just think they should go and you just keep layering until it just feels like it's done and it feels right to you. And I think some of those types of things naturally fall into line with the way colors work together and the way light and dark works together. And you have that contrast and also your, your composition and your setup and the the different good looks and the style mean a lot to so many people but um i think you you kind of fall into just a natural way of learning those types of skills and that has been really valuable to me and it's fun to do so it's definitely worthwhile for sure And even after finishing this painting, I think looking at it now, I'm really happy with how it turned out and there's still things that I might change or make better or make a little bit different after having time to kind of, to mull it over for a while, I guess you could say. But um, one of my moments of making some updates or changes is actually in this video and you'll see at the end and I'll kind of explain it as we go. But it's interesting what kind of jumps out at you after you do something <laughs> and you can make little adjustments here and there to, I wouldn't say so much fix a problem as just make it more of what you want it to be and say what you want it to say. And so I had gone through and kind of put some organic dark lines in there. I'm starting to think about what I might like this to turn into. And my first one that I did on the video was very much abstract with, you know, basically circles. And I really liked how that turned out. This one is going to be a little bit more representational. And I'm kind of putting in the groundwork here where um, I'm adding a little bit of a hint of um, I guess flora, <laughs> nature, uh, you know, the spirals and the lines that kind of look like little branches or twigs or something like that. So I'm kind of bringing a little bit of nature elements into the painting and 
my mind's just kind of working around this time and I'm thinking of what I might like it to be, what I might like to turn into my focal point with this background that I have here. And I really like those swirls that I had put in. So I decided to concentrate a little bit more on those for some of my background and then consider some focal point stuff down the road a little bit. And so I'm calming down some of that background. Now that I know I want to focus more on these swirls, I'm going to be making um, more of a concentrated effort on making marks that bring those to the front and then kind of push some other things into the background a little bit, either by blending them in a little bit or painting over them all together or just toning them down a little bit with a bit of a transparent layer of something. And I'm doing that here by just breaking up some of those circles a little bit. I'm not getting rid of them entirely, but I'm just leaving sort of a hint of them more than them kind of taking over the painting with the dark blue. And so then they'll just become almost like kind of the texture than the main event. And so now I'm coming in with some more of that rose color to, you know, unblended to brighten things up a little bit. And right here, I, it was a little bit too strong. I wanted it to look a little bit more cloudy and blended. So I just took some water and just blotted it a little bit. And then with the rest of my rose that I'm putting on, I'm going to add a little bit of water to the mix just to make it a little thinner and easier to kind of feather out where I want to put it. I wanted the stronger color but not necessarily full opacity and sometimes those paints can be pretty opaque which is a good thing <laughs> but um, you can also water it or add medium if you want to thin it out a little bit and make it a little bit more transparent and fluid. And so I'm kind of putting in that bit of a brighter color next to some of those swirls that I had and some of those branches um, just to kind of bring them out a little bit more and increase that contrast a little bit more. And it also adds kind of like, almost like a neat little peachy glow to the background, which I thought looked pretty cute. I don't know. Is cute the right word? I liked it. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> and I'm still just kind of going around finding opportunities where I can sort of highlight those shapes that I had put in.
So now is where I'm going in with the focal points that I had thought of and I want to keep it very loose and organic but I'm going in with this green yellow and some unbleached titanium and some black and I'm going to do some varying levels of mixes and um, this green is kind of naturally dark and so it's a nice contrast against that lighter background too. And so I'm starting to put in some very loose and crinkly leaves because I, I still want to keep it pretty abstract looking but definitely recognizable as a real thing <laughs> and so I'm just kind of putting in leaves where they seem right putting in little little uh I guess bundles of leaves and I'm following along loosely with those original lines I had put down in the background, but those actually won't be the final branches that connect my leaves. They kind of fade into the background a little bit later on, but I am loosely following some of the lines on there. And like you can see, they're just simple brush marks, uh, very brushy looking. Um, it's one of the reasons I love that brush. You can see all of the bristle marks, which I love. And I'm just going in different directions and filling in spaces where I think it might need a little extra paint. And then I'm going to start blending a different color of green that's much darker and then getting some more contrast even with the leaves because right now they're all just one color and kind of flat so I wanted to definitely add some more interest so I'm going to go in with a couple of different colors here so that you there's some different values different shades So now I'm going very dark and putting in my little branches and these are also really loose and squiggly <laughs> and just kind of traveling over the page. And I mixed my green in with some black and on a couple of those I'm extending the branches off the page so it looks like it might be a vine that kind of continues off the page. And I decided while I was going that I wanted to put a couple of more leaves off of that little branch. So I kind of built it in and I'll be adding a couple of more there. Now I'm working on a lighter green with some yellow mixed in and making some more leaves just to add some more variation along the vines and you can kind of see how it changes with the different colors mixed in And I'm putting some leaves kind of in the background and some up front so that there's a good mix. And then I want to put in some highlights. So I mix whatever green is left over on my brush with quite a bit of yellow. And I'm just going over some of those leaves and adding a yellow line. Again, very loose and brushy. And just giving you that idea of a highlight 
on some different leaves and some color variation. And this is where that layering really comes in and it's nice because it just adds that extra bit of interest. It's not just green leaves, it's different shades of green and yellow. And I'll actually go in with some titanium white and some white as highlights too. I have some darkness on here. I've got a lot of... Um, sort of mid-tones and some lighter shades, but I don't have really that that pop of white. And so I'm also going to add that to the leaves too, to increase some more contrast. And I decided to put some of the titanium or the unbleached titanium in there to add a little bit, a little bit of a tone to the white. And that just kind of defines some edges some more and gives it a little bit more life. Now where I had talked about making corrections, I so I finished here and I really, really liked how it looked and came out. But you might notice the bottom is just kind of empty. And so I've got all these leaves just crowding <laughs> in like the top two thirds of the paper. And so I didn't really consider it at the time. And I'm actually putting in some green marks on here too, just because I wanted that color somewhere else on the page. And it was almost like I had a feeling like there was some green missing, but what it actually was that I felt later was that really I needed a couple of leaves or something at the bottom too. And so I'm kind of going through and feeling my way around with the green and I even took off the tape like it was going to be done. I was going to finish up the video, but I just kept thinking, no, there's something missing. And I even put on my splashes here. Because at this point, I'm still thinking, well, I'm done with this painting. <laughs> and I I didn't, I, I mean, I, like I was going to be done because I couldn't really think just yet of what else I wanted to put on. But it really didn't quite feel done to me. And so I'm putting on my white and my dark splashes, which I really liked. I liked how that turned out a lot. It added just some extra interest on the page. And I'm putting in a lot of splashes. <laughs> I didn't realize it was so much. And I didn't want to take out the tape peeling because that's always so satisfying. So we'll get this tape peeled off. And then I'm going to go back in and fix up that bottom a little bit so it looks better to me. But I love those crisp edges when the tape comes off. It's just really something that makes it look pretty finished too. And so now here I am, broke back out the plate and I'm mixing some color just to add some more leaves at the bottom. And to me, this is what really finished it off. It didn't have to be as crowded as at the top, but it just needed something because if I'm going to have a continuing plant and it's going to be a vine, I just wanted something there so it didn't feel so heavy on just the one side. And I kind of evaluate it and I'm just about there but I did one more little leaf, <laughs> actually two more, three more little leaves, <laughs> four more little leaves. Boy, how many did I make? You forget when you're doing the voiceover. <laughs> 
and I'm making them kind of vary in color just like the ones up top so that they don't look out of place. So I'm adding the yellow highlights and the white just like I did with the other ones. So now they look like they go. And now it actually feels done to me. So I hope you enjoyed this painting and following along with me today. I hope you do your own. And until next time, keep creating. And thank you for watching.